Hey, howdy, hey, everybody, and welcome to another wonderful episode of WLHW. I'm Mr. Grubb. And I'm Kira. Woo! And friends, we are excited to bring you so many fun segments today. And today, the first one starting off is Global News with Grace. It's April 21st and it's time for global news. Let's get started. First step, the FDA and CDC have both called on Johnson & Johnson, one of the vaccine companies, to temporarily stop distributing their single dose vaccine. This is due to the rare occurrence of blood clots in four individuals who got the, their vaccine. While millions have been unaffected, both the CDC and FDA have said that vaccine safety is one of their main priorities. In addition, these blood clots caused one person to die and another to be in critical condition. They are currently investigating the cause of these blood clots and will update the public when they have more information. Next up, Wildcats, this past weekend on April 17th, we recognize National Haiku Day. Haikus are a type of poetry originating in Japan that are traditionally about nature. There are three lines and follow a pattern of five syllables, seven syllables, and then five syllables again. Do you like haikus? You should decide for yourself. This haiku is bad. Finally, Wildcats, I've got another holiday for you. Tomorrow is Earth Day, a holiday started in 1970. We celebrate this holiday every year on April 22nd to honor our planet. Many people do this by doing environmental cleanups or just being outside. Thank you, Earth. You honestly make my day. Well, that's all I've got for you, Wildcats. See you next time on Global News. Wow, Grace, thank you for all those punny pun puns. Guys, we have Alchemy Carlson here with some more information about LGBTQ plus awareness. And I'm excited to see what she has to offer this week. Take it away, Alchemy. Hi, it's Alchemy. And for today's segment of LGBTQ plus portrayal in our modern media and entertainment, we'll be diving into the barrier gaze trope. The barrier gaze trope, formerly known as dead lesbian syndrome because many who fall victim to it are female, is a common cliche amongst mainly TV shows and movies. The trope itself refers to directors and producers killing off characters of the LGBTQ community, often because of their sexuality or gender. Now, when we try to guess why producers would do this, the most obvious answer is that they're trying not to be too pro-gay as not to affect their ratings or public approval. This is somewhat true, as there are examples in the cinema of the early and mid-1900s. This relates to the feminization of male villains, as being a feminine man is seen as a bad trait. We can even see male villains in Disney having stereotypically feminine attributes, from their physical features to their style and personality. But in the current era, the common death of LGBTQ characters is more complex. We can often see the character die in a noble or sacrificial way to say that the show is inclusive and respects queer identities. The directors are still able to make out with killing them though, which contradicts the entire idea. Then there's the ever popular suicide death, which plays into the idea of queer life being inherently tragic. Although a queer character dying by suicide is fine in just sheer idea, they often do so because of sexuality-related themes, like homophobia, their own confusion or self-rejection, or even just related diseases like AIDS. It's also upsetting because straight or cisgendered characters rarely, if ever, die because of their sexuality or gender. In the end, the main problems with the bury your gaze trope is that 1. The absolute abundance of these occurrences in media means that there are very few examples of happy stories for queer characters. Two, queer characters being killed makes it so that they play less of a role in the show, meaning that they're often very flat personas and have less of a character arc. And three, it slims the positive representation of queer characters to often just being pawns in our media, not even entirely relevant or important to the story. If adding LGBTQ plus characters to a production or piece of literature is really about valuing the community, then the character themselves should also be valued. Wow, that was great. Don't you think, Mr. Girl? You know, if it was any better, <laughs> I probably couldn't understand it. <laughs> What's up next? Uh, we have animal facts. 
Cyrus. Fantastic. Let's go learn something. Hey guys, I'm back with some more awesome animal facts. Today, all about animals that can be found in your barn. Okay, so let's start. First is otters. There are 13 species of otters, and just about all of them are decreasing sorrow strands about the otters to be nearly sacred creatures. Otters have very distinctive poop, and that scat, also poop, has its own name. Otters' moms are totally game for adoption. They have the thickest fur of any mammal in the animal kingdom. Next, we have snapping turtles. Oh my gosh. Common snapping turtles' scientific name is Shieldria serpentina. They have powerful jaws and have an average bite force of 209. The common snapping turtle is an aquatic turtle that prefers slow-moving, shallow bodies of water with muddy bottoms, which gives them places to hide. Next is ducks. Ducks are also called waterfowl because they are normally found in places where there is water like ponds, streams, and rivers. Ducks can live up to 20 years, depending on the species, if well cared for. The production of eggs is affected by daylight. When there is more daylight, the ducks will lay more eggs. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Hope you have a great day. And this is a pond. See you next time. Bye. Cyrus, if he fills any more of my brain with animal facts, it might in fact explode. How's your brain feeling? Uh, very exploded. Woo hoo hoo! Boom boom! Well, before hey guys, we're always looking for clicks, and we're always looking to do shameless self promotion. So let's pause for a commercial break. Well, let's get right down into business. Walker Talk is Walton's best podcast ever. Um, Jezo. It's the only one. Sorry, sorry. Anyway, guys, our podcast is a fun-filled voice over audio conversation. We want to learn something about an individual. Do you have a special talent or a cool pet or what? That individual could be you. If you're interested in being in our podcast, we would love to see and get to know you. Please contact agroff at k12armon.org if you're interested. So, if that seems interesting to you, come on, join, and we can't wait to meet you. We have a great time here at the Emma and Giselle party. That's right. Yeah. Well, guys, Bye. we hope to see you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Well, before our blanks explode, let's go learn how to deal with all that information in our next segment. Virtual Learning Tips with Kat. Hi guys, welcome back to five Virtual Learning Tips with Kat. Let's get started. Even when doing most of your schoolwork online, we still need some supplies like a pencil and a notebook. So if you are doing school somewhere else besides your room or your house, you can make a little bag with stuff you need for the day, like a bag of paper or pencils and pens, or just whatever, or just with anything you need to bring. When you're on break or lunch and do you have nothing to do and you're like, what to do? Try looking at your next class's assignments to see, oh, hey, I have to do this and that for class. Reason to this is you will have an idea of what you're doing for class and you won't be so unprepared. So usually I give you a certain app that can help you with school in some type of way. So this week's app is Brainly. You might have heard of Brainly before, so it is an app where you can type any question and, and get answers to it. You can also do so much more on Brainly too. I recommend checking it out someday. Lastly, if school is super stressful. Don't worry, I'm sure we've all been there. I School is stressful for me every day, so don't worry about it. Again, lastly, if school is super stressful to the point where you feel like screaming, try petting a pet that you have. Your pets will help your stress go down and make you more calm. If you don't have pets, then I don't know what to do about that. Um, this might sound stupid, but if you have a stuffed animal, maybe you could try that. Uh, just some ideas, improvise. Anyway, thanks for listening to my virtual learning tips. I hope these tips will help you with your virtual learning and I'll see you next time. Uh, this amigos, everybody. Wow, friends, this has been a wonderful WLHW episode. And if you're interested in expressing yourself on whatever topic or talent on our show, shoot us an email. But 
I think that's all we have for you. And in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.